Some people think, God's not really using me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pumping gas or, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm running a cash register. God can use you wherever you are at. You are a kingdom citizen, ambassador of the kingdom of God. Woo! About, I'm getting excited again. I'm getting excited again. Well, I um, have been ministering on the kingdom of God. And this is an important, how many believe that this is a very important subject? The kingdom of God. Why would this be so important? When Jesus said in Matthew 6.33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That makes it pretty important. I said that I uh, searched through my Bible and I've been looking for a seek ye second for about 30 years now. Haven't found it yet. And I was thinking, man, you know, God should at least put together some kind of a 12-step program. One step, guys, one thing. But this takes, this can take, there's so many facets to it. It's going to take, I would say, more than this life, probably eternity before we really discover every part of this kingdom. The, the, um, the kingdom of God, the, the part that he created in the natural is called the universe. And our telescopes can go so far and they think, what was it, about 500 million um, galaxies right now? How many remember the Giglio videos? Where they, you know, they get so far back away from the earth, you know, it's like we're this little spot of dust. You can, can't even hardly see it. Now, that's just the physical universe. What about the unseen? This is the part we can see. That's the unseen. And all of it is the kingdom of God and much more. It's time to connect with the kingdom of God. Would you go ahead and um, bring up uh, Matthew 6, um, 9 through 13? We're going to uh, look at the Lord's Prayer today. I'm going to start with that. The Lord's Prayer. I'm just going to have that. I just want to have that there right now. Actually, I just wanted to. Uh, touch a little bit about my background. I, I, I was thinking about that before I do that. But let's just have that there. Right there. Now, my background, I come from... The Lord told me to talk about this just a little bit today. I come from an interracial, multicultural, interdenominational, blended family. My father... My step, well, not stepfather, my father that adopted me. I can't, he's not, when you adopt you, you're not step anymore, right? Your adopted son. Adopted my sister, Geraldine, who's here. He was French and um, German. And his first wife was Irish. And he had three children. And my mother is uh, Samoan and Italian. And my biological father was French and English. And my mom had three children. And they got together and got married. It was... The Hawaiian Brady Bunch. Okay? Then they have my brother Troy. So I got a brother with red hair and freckles. Got a sister with blonde hair and blue eyes. Got another brother who looks like Paul McCartney. My sister Jerry, my sister Tiari, all, all a little different. When we lived in Hawaii, we'd move to different parts, you know, different neighborhoods, and people would think, you know, the, this is how the local people are talking to me. Kind of look down on the island, you know. I think they had too many luau's. All the kids look different. <laughs> Trying to figure out what's going on here. My sister with the blonde hair and blue eyes married a Filipino man. His name was Mag Piong. I used to call him Mag Piong P.I. I love that. And uh, my brother with the red hair and freckles married a Korean wife. And... Uh, so on and so forth. Uh, lo long story short, we had this blend. My mom said, we're a league of nations. That's why I feel so at home here at this church. 
I do. I feel so. This is like he reminds me of my dad some way, service man. You know, he's got he's got rules. He's had, he he does preach the word of God. He tells it like it is. We've got people from all different backgrounds, all different denominations that have come in and joined here, all different cultures. And you know what? We're proof that we are a, that we can all be a family that this can work that interracial interblended interdenominational can work amen it works and as soon as you step out the door they're saying we're against this guy and we're against that guy and this matters and that matters and but not not in this family man this family everybody everybody matters here everybody matters we are we are we're 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 interracial intercultural blended family here at Harvest Church International. We want to invite you folks that are just watching too. Come and join us. We are having a good time here. <laughs> we got all kinds of different foods when we get uh, together. And so that's where this connection comes, you know, uh, with m myself and I, why I feel so, I've been here at this church for a long time. I feel so at home. I'm passionate about the kingdom of God because I was raised in Hawaii. Pastor Brian brought this up on Sunday and it's it's just it's just burning inside of me, living inside of me. And what what does Hawaii have to do with that? Hawaii is the only state in all of the fifty states that ever was a kingdom of its own. It was a nation kingdom. Now there is some argument. Okay, there were the nations, the the Native American nations, and so on. The difference with Hawaii was that King Kamehameha established a kingdom, and he established thirty one embassies around the world. There was embassies in England and embassies in Australia, there were embassies in America, there were embassy, embassies all over the world. So we were a world-recognized kingdom. It was called the Kingdom of Hawaii. So Hawaii became a part of the, the United States in 1893. And um, being raised in the islands, you know, we, we, we took the, the king um, concept was always around us all the time. Even though we're part of the United States, there's still the kingdom culture. There's still the people that live in Hawaii that still feel like they're, that's their kingdom. You know? I went to king school. I went to King Kamehameha schools in the, in, in the summertime to learn how to play basketball. And, and, and I went to um, King Castle High School where I studied Hawaiian history, which was all about the kingdom of Hawaii. King Kamehameha... All of the land in Hawaii belonged to King Kamehameha. The fish in the sea belonged to King Kamehameha. The people belonged to King Kamehameha. Everything belonged to him. He was a sovereign ruler. This concept we don't really understand in America. Well, this was how, what, what I was being taught. I, I, when I went to high school, I had the option of taking American history or Hawaiian history. I'd learned American history at, in uh, middle school, so I decided to take Hawaiian history. For four years, I think it was about three years, I learned Hawaiian history, and then I graduated high school, and I went into the tour industry in Hawaii. And what did we teach the tourists? I was in the tour industry for nine years. I'm showing them around the island. I'm teaching them about the kingdom of Hawaii. So I have this thing about kings and kingdoms. And so when I read the Bible, I mean, it really clicked for me. A lot of things clicked. And I, I thought, what is wrong with people? They don't understand this. But... But it's because I had an, I, I guess I, kept, I can say I had a little bit of an advantage, right? Because uh, knowing the kingdom concept, being in the kingdom, every street in Hawaii is named after a king. You know, there's uh, Kalakaua Avenue, named after King David, Kalakaua, the Merry Monarch. There's Kapiolani Boulevard, named after Queen Kapiolani. You know, there's all of that. I mean, Kamehameha Highway, you know. So, this is why I'm so passionate about the kingdom. And when, when, when Pastor licensed me and he's going to ordain us as ministers for, of this church, he licensed me to represent the church out in the community, and I do weddings and funerals and things like that and, and minister at different churches. Um, the day that he did that, I started really praying about, God, what do you want me to preach? I mean, I've preached a lot of different messages, and it was like, have you ever had the answer to your question that was answered, God answered it like a year ago, but you just kind of forgot about it, or you, you missed it, or maybe five years ago, and you go, hey, if I just kind of go back a little bit, I might find, you know, I wasn't paying attention. Maybe I wasn't taking it seriously, 
And then it comes up again in a scripture. You come to church or something, pastor will preach that. You go, I knew that five years ago. And I've been asking for that same. There it is. Come on. Amen. Isn't that right? So this would happen to me. It's like, bing, okay, the kingdom of God. This is what you are supposed to be preaching, David. The kingdom of God was what Jesus focused on in his ministry. He had a ministry that lasted, that took him 30 years to train up to do. I'm coming up on that now. <laughs> 30 years. And then he did three and a half years. And what did he do? It changed the world forever. Forever. And ever, and ever, and ever. Because he, he told everyone to repent. Change your thinking. Pastor Brian brought that. I mean, Pastor Kelly brought that out on Sunday. I was so powerful because so many times you hear the word repent. People go, ooh, ooh, we don't want to repent. That sounds like some kind of a religious thing to do. We don't like repent. Repent means to change your thinking. So that makes you turn about and maybe go in a different direction. There's another analogy of, of repent that means you're on top. When you're on top, you know, Adam was on top with God. He's walking around with God on the, in the cool of the day. He's on top, right? He's pented up there with God. And then something, there was a fall. Something knocked down and went on the ground. It fell down, right? And then you get back up and you put that in and you repent. Where are you going? You're getting back on top with God. You get back right on standing with God. That's what repent. Ooh, that's part of repent. There's, this, is, there's more, this is a faceted word. If you, if you ever notice, like in the Hawaiian language or even in the hebrew language or even maybe even the, the 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 spanish language there's some words that have more than one type of meaning more more than one application like the word aloha my ministry that i uh, have that the lord gave me is called aloha ministries aloha can mean hello aloha oi can mean goodbye aloha nui loa means i love you very much Aloha kiakua means God is love. And when you take the word aloha and you find it in the ancient Polynesian priestly language, which came all the way at origin of Samoa and Tonga and then to the islands of Hawaii, alo means the son of the ali'i. And the ali'is were the kings. They were considered gods like the pharaohs. So if you were an alo, you were the son of the ali'i. And if you add ha to that, that means breath of life. So that represents God. So the word aloha in the ancient priestly language means the divine son of the one true living God be with you. Hallelujah. That's why when the, when the missionaries came to Hawaii and they started preaching about the kingdom of God, the people of Hawaii said, wow, hey, we know about nu'u. We know about some of these stories. Nu was the first Hawaiian. He's the one who put the big canoe together with the house on it, put all the animals in it because there was a flood coming. We know that. You know? We know. And then the missionary said, wait a minute, how do these people know that? And then they went to another place and they found out, they know it over here. They know it in China. They know it. And they found out that people all around the world know about the flood. Well, where was the first American missionaries? Where did they ever go? Where was the first place they went to? was Hawaii. And they found out that the Hawaiians had these stories. But you know what they didn't have? They didn't know about Jesus. The divine son of the one. If you were the son of the elite, you represented that elite. They, they, had, they had this saying. They had it in the priesthood language. But they didn't really. The people, the average people in Hawaii, they didn't know about Jesus. Man, when they found out about Jesus, they came. They came the missionaries came in 1820. By 1837. Um, 17 years later, 97% of the people of Hawaii professed Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. They had people falling out into the sugarcane fields, just slain in the spirit. They call it the Great Awakening in Hawaii. The Great Awakening. The church at Kauai High. Kauai High was a town with about 1,000 people. You know how many people went to church there on Sunday? 7,000. They said, how in the world is 7,000 people coming to a town? Because they came from all over the big island and they came on there. They walked through the lava rocks to get there to go to church. Reverend Lorenzo Lyons led some of the most amazing, you know. 
And so these people had this concept of kingdom. And so when they, when they read this book, Hawaiians are always looking for, they didn't really have a written language. They had a, they had a, a language of, you know, where they, everything was preserved in song and dance. So they, um, they, they're, they're looking for the storyline. So this book to them was a book about a king, <laughs> about a kingdom, and about a royal family. And they could get into the royal family. 90% of them were peasants. They were, they were subject to all kinds of different types of uh, laws and, you know, control. And, and you know, it wasn't really the, the nicest kingdom. You know what I'm saying? So this was, to them, a book about a king and a kingdom and a royal family. We're going to get into that today right now. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let's stop right there for just a minute. Thy will be done. How many would say that God's will is being done on the earth right now? How many would say that the will of the other kingdom, the, the kingdom of darkness, the will of the enemy is being done on the earth right now? Okay, you're both right. The answer to the question is yes. Wouldn't take too much of a rocket scientist or anybody who has got any natural understanding to look around, watch the news right now and realize that there is a kingdom of darkness and it is work on this earth right now. And it's moving in different places. But there is a kingdom of God. There is the kingdom of God. Is the will of God being done? Wherever the, wherever the kingdom of God is, that's where, the king, that's where the king's will is being done. Is the will of God being done anywhere on the earth? Well, how about Harvest Church International? How about that? <laughs> how about your house? How about right at your house? You, you can pray this right here. Jesus said, when you pray... He didn't say, he, you know, he didn't say, um, uh, occasionally think about this, you know, maybe, you know, once in a while, maybe on Easter, you know, we'll say this on Easter or something, maybe Christmas, whatever. You know what Jesus said? He said, when you pray, if you look back at this, let's go back one. I like that. It says, after this manner, therefore pray ye. And some, some, some translations say, when you pray. Jesus said, when, you pray, you know, when you're getting ready to pray, pray this. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Go ahead. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is crucial for us as believers, as Christians, we must know the difference between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. We may need to go back to have a theology of a three-year-old. And understand that there's a good God and a bad devil. Some people go to church, go, I'm at church, they go to school and they read these big thick books and they come back four or five years later and they come back and say, well, you know, we know that, you know, we've learned now that God and the devil is working together. And they're kind of, you know, sometimes God has a bad day and sometimes the devil, you know, ah. Have you heard this? I mean, I've, I'm, has anybody heard this stuff? Where they think that God and the devil is working. I mean, we don't hear it at this church, but it's out there in the world. I mean, some of this, it's garbage. I'm like, are you serious? I'm thinking, okay, if God and the devil are working together, guess what, folks? We've had it. We may as well quit now. I mean, really, that's preposterous. That's absolutely crazy. No, there is a kingdom, and Jesus there's consequences for mistaking the work of the devil for God and saying, well, you know, um, uh, God's in control. Some people say, well, God's in control. Some, we have a disaster out here. And well, God's in control. And all these people are dying. That's not the king. What is the difference between, let, you know, this is part of why we're going, we, we've got to understand the kingdom. What's the, one, of the, one of the scriptures Jesus used to illustrate the difference? John 10.10. 10. The thief comes not but to steal. Steal is first. 
kill, and destroy. I always, when, I, when something starts missing at my place, somebody came and stole the catalytic converter out of our truck on our ranch. I said, we stopping it at stealing because next is kill and destroy. Guys, we need, you know, if there's any stealing going on, stop it there. It doesn't matter whether within the family or wherever it is, because that right there is the manifested presence of the kingdom of darkness. You need to stop the stealing, right? <laughs> Amen. And even if you're the one doing the stealing, stop that too. Yeah. Return sevenfold work so that you can work for working for what is Ephesians working for working for a giving and not just a living. Amen. So we can work for a giving. I'm working for a giving. Who praise the Lord. So the enemy comes to steal, then kill. It might just it might not be, you know, like a, a physical death, but it could be the death of some kind of a relationship or a death of some kind of a of income or death. You know, he wants to kill something. He likes killing. Death is his thing. God did not invent death anywhere in the Bible. There's no place where God invented this thing. In fact, it says that's the last enemy that's going to be put under. We're going to get to that next week. <laughs> Amen. The last one. Yeah. Amen? So he comes to steal, kill, and then what's the last one? Destroy. Have we seen any stealing, killing, and destroying going on in our nation lately? What about last summer? What about, what about our state of Oregon? Wow. This is not God. And people say, well, God's in control. That is not God. We are, are we're the body of Christ. We need to make sure we know the difference. And we know what, what is God. But what does the rest of that verse say? It says, but I, Jesus, I, I have come that you might, you just might, if you can follow some instructions, simple ones, you just might have life and have it what? More abundantly. How many want life more abundantly? How many want God to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you can't contain? Amen. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next one. Matthew 6. Oh. Give us this day our daily bread. Did you know that my God, he's your God too, will supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory? By Christ Jesus, by Christ Jesus, he's going to supply all, everything I need, everything I need, you supply. Thank you, God. Have you ever had God meet your need and you just go, wow, man, I didn't even see that need coming or I didn't know how it was going to happen. Meet your need. My God will supply all of my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He gives us our daily bread. Amen. Next. And forgive us our debts. Oh, I think that was it. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Jesus also told us that um, if we don't forgive those who have trespassed or that have sinned against us, then our Father in heaven is not going to be able to forgive us. So we want to be able to forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And forgive us our debts. So we want to remember, bear in mind, forgiveness is one of the, you know when God says he gives you the keys to the kingdom? He showed me this. He said, forgiveness, there's one key mark, forgiveness. That is a big one. You know how many things that thing unlocks? Unbelievable what that will unlock in your life. If you're holding on to unforgiveness, you got a key and you're using it, but you're locking up all the blessings of the Lord. You got a key to the kingdom and you're locking up, you're using it. You're, you can use it to, you can, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Whatever you unlock, you, can, you got the key to unlock. You got the key. You can lock it up or you can unlock it. <laughs> Amen. You know, you got the key. Forgiveness, you know, that's up to you. God tells you what to do. If you, if you actually can take this and, you know, sometimes it takes, a, have you ever, has anybody in here ever had a problem forgiving somebody? <laughs> I'm going to raise my hand up real high. <laughs> Those who are not raising your hand, we are praying. We are praying for you. We forgive you right now. Because you know, you know what? It's, it's not our natural nature. It's not our nature. This is a kingdom thing. 
This is the nature, this is the culture of the kingdom, to forgive. Forgive those who despitefully use you. Forgive those who, man, who've really ticked you off. Maybe that's a you know, way you should say it. Well, it's a key. Okay, next. Praise God. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Okay, we're asking God to not lead us into temptation, but you know what I found on this one? Most of the time, the problem is me leading myself into temptation. I'm flipping on to looking at the wrong thing. I'm going into the wrong place. I'm hanging around the wrong people. Wow. I want to tell you something. You know, we, we talk about we're faith church here, right? Are we a faith church? Yeah. How many got faith in Jesus? Amen. Woo! We're a faith church. Amen. We are. But the Lord showed me this. He said, faith comes by hearing the anointed word of God, but faith also leaveth by hearing. In other words, if you start listening to the, there's people, you know, I've had this happen to myself over the years. I've been walking with the Lord for about three decades now. I, I made a real commitment to really walk with God in 1990. And I'm, you know, I'll be getting a word of faith at church and I'll walk out the door and I'll be at the restaurant. No sooner I'm listening to something else or watching something on TV and the faith left. Faith cometh by hearing, faith leaveth by hearing. Be careful what you let into these ears. Be careful what you let into these eyes. You don't want your faith to leave. We got to hang on to this faith. We want to build up our faith, man. We want to be strong. We, you you want to be around faith buddies. You want to be around. I mean, I like being around. I like being around, you know, sometimes, you know, like Pastor Kelly and Pastor Brian ask me sometimes to come and help out with the church camp. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, I was really hurting last year after. <laughs> and I don't know. I mean, these kids, ah, you know. I don't know. I mean, these kids remind me of me when I was a kid. And man, I wanted to, you know, get them, you know. But you know what? I said, you know what I really like, though? Being around faith buddies. Being around these guys. These guys, just, they live it, man. They don't even, they're not even, they don't even have to talk it. They just show up down there and say, we're doing this. We're doing that. Okay. Oh, somebody's got, somebody's got ukus. That's what, uh, lice in Hawaiian, that's ukus. You know, like the ukulele, the jumping flea. That's what they named it. <laughs> That's the name. That's what that means in Hawaiian, by the way, <laughs> the jumping flea. <laughs> and she's over there. She's overcoming, man. She's faith. You're around faith buddies. man. That, that's priceless. Okay, I can do this, man. I can do this. Also, I, I, just bringing that up by a minute. You know, I was there one time and I said, Lord, you know, you, you know, you got me here and I'm going through some stuff and I've still got some baggage from my first marriage and, you know, other people to forgive. And this kid reminds me of that and the other thing. And um, one of the kids came in right at the end of the camp. And he goes, I hate this camp. I don't want to be here. I said, we got to clean up. We're going to go home. And he goes, no. And he runs away. And I'm thinking, Whew. where's Dave Lovin calm me down over here? I'm about ready. You know, my dad, I wouldn't put up with any of this garbage, you know. And I said, God. Okay, God, Dave's not, Dave's not around. Pastor's busy doing something else. I'm going to have to talk to God about this. I get, God, what am I supposed to do when, with this kid? You know what God told me? He says, same thing I do when you act like that. Same thing. And you know, what, you know what it was? Probably the best therapy I had all year. I didn't have to go see a therapist the whole year. Praise God. The kids, man, they'll wake you up. You know what I'm saying? But get around faith buddies, man. Be careful. Find somebody you can call and talk to. Ladies, got ladies group here at the church. Pastor Kelly's teaching about being spirit led. There isn't re that's, that's another subject that's probably not anything much more important than that. You got to be able to hear from God. You got to be able to know the difference between king, right, you know, from the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. Hook up. Don't, don't, do not, do not believe this lie that is going around that, oh, well, you know, we can't really get together because, you know, it could be dangerous. That's a bunch of hooey. That's, that's, you know, that's ho male male. I mean, I can say that in Hawaiian, right? You know, I mean, come on. We have to, we cannot fors forsake the, the coming together, assembling together. We cannot, because this is where we build each other's faith and the iron sharpens the iron, even in the ladies. You know, it's not just men. I mean, women, men, they're both, you know, there's one that's a wombed man and there's one that's a man. But the man part is the spirit part. And that's what the sh gets sharpened, right? 
Amen? Amen. We've got to sharpen that up, guys. Man, I'm just, I see, I'm so excited about all these kingdom brothers and sisters I got here in this kingdom. Amen. Okay. So, um, for thine is the kingdom and the power, okay, but deliver us from evil. Everywhere Jesus went when he preached the kingdom, you saw two things happening all the time. Healing and deliverance. They'd bring all the demons. Well, Jesus is coming. Let's go all the demon-possessed people and bring him to the ministry. How many are? Boy, I'm, glad. I'm not quite ready for that yet. But, <laughs> but did you notice that that's what happened? Pastor, you, you know that. I mean, you, did you guys ever read your Bible and notice Jesus is coming to town, so they get all the demon-possessed people, and they get all the sick people, and they bring him all, bring all the Jesus. And everywhere he went, there was healings and deliverance. And Jesus went about and he healed how many of them? All. All. And some of them, he, he, uh, some of them recovered later. They, they didn't get healed right, but they recovered later in, in some different parts. But this, is, this followed his ministry everywhere you went. For thine is the kingdom because he delivered us from evil, but thine is the kingdom. And see, in the kingdom is the power, guys. That's where the power is. See, you know, Jesus did not come down to earth. And it says, Jesus came um, and um, he gave his life so that we could, you know, so that we could be saved and he paid the debt for our sin. Amen. Right. But I keep thinking, well, you know, OK, that's good. But why didn't he just come and give us some power right here? We need how many need power to get more money? How many power to, to solve your problems with your relationships? How many could use a little bit of power to get your body healed up? Anybody? Right there, kingdom, that's where, the, you know why he didn't give us it? Because we already have it. See, we already got it. It's already there. It's in the kingdom. That's where the power is. We just don't know how to access it. We got to learn how to access it. We really do. It's like, it's like, to me, it's like a five-year-old boy that says, man, I want to drive that semi-truck. Woo! Right? He's five years old and he wants to drive the semi-truck. And this thing's got thousands of horsepowers, Right? But he don't even know how to get in there and turn the key. It doesn't mean he doesn't have it. You could set him in there. He, now he's got it. But he doesn't know how to use it. See, we want to learn. This is why we're here, guys. This is why you're here on Wednesday nights. This is why you're here on Sunday. We want to learn how to use the keys of the kingdom and access the power. Amen. So we can be that light in this world. So that the people... <laughs> the people around us in this community will say, man, I have got to find out what this guy's got. He's not shook up about anything. He keeps on going forward. Uh, he knows, you know, he's got a confidence. There's a light shining in him. Amen? Amen. Praise God. I'd like to go to um, Luke twelve twenty nine. Luke 12, 29. I, can't get, I get on these verses and I, it takes me a long time to get to where I want to go, but there's a lot in here. There's so much in the kingdom. Wow. And you do not seek by meditating and reasoning to inquire what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor by anxious trouble, mind unsettled, excited, worried, in suspense. Right here. This is just another way of saying what we see in Matthew 6.33. I, I saw this in Luke and I thought, wow. I mean, the, the, the Amplified really covers all of the, the bases here. Have you ever been anxious about, you know, are you going to get enough money? Or are you going to keep your job? Have you been, ever been unsettled? about are we going to are we going to be able to put some food are we going to, is there going to be a problem i mean there's some problems coming and they and and they keep preaching this stuff to get us unsettled right not going to, there's not going to be enough there's always a, there's it says do not seek do not even take no thought take no thought about all of these things go ahead for the next one for the pagans for the pagan world is greedily seeking these things, and your father knows that you have need of them. Everybody in the world is seeking these things. 
They're seeking what they're going to eat, what they're going to wear, where they're going to live, what they're going to do. Amen? But God knows that you have need of these things. Go ahead, next. Aim, only aim at and strive for and seek his kingdom. And all these things shall be supplied to you. The other translation says added to you, supplied to you, given to you. You're, it's going to just start to come uh, to you. When you put his kingdom first, his way of doing things. His way of, of, of doing things. To follow the instructions in the book here on how to, act, to do the kingdom. And first, in order to do the kingdom, we got to understand what a kingdom is. So, I'd like to go to Philippians 2.21. And it says, right there, for all seek their own, but not the things which are Jesus Christ. This is what the world is doing. The world is seeking their own. Everybody's seeking, how am I going to get ahead? How am I going to advance my business? How am I going to get a better job? How am I going to get better clothes? Amen? We're not supposed to be just seeking just that. We're supposed to be seeking the kingdom of God. Hallelujah, the kingdom of God. Now, we, we've said this so many times, the kingdom of God, that we, we get to the point where it becomes like, um, like it's, uh, we know what that means, you know. Uh, I've had people say, oh, I know what the kingdom of God is, that means prayer. That's part of it. I know the kingdom of God, that means talking in tongues. Okay, I mean, I, mean, I mean the kingdom of God is just basically going to church, right? I know some of them, well, it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. It's all of those things and so much more. So much more. Amen? The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God was very important to Jesus in his ministry because in the New Testament, Jesus mentioned the kingdom over 100 times. Some, some versions, it's almost 150 times. I've counted them in different ones, depending on how it's written. 30 times in the, in the book of Matthew alone. 30 times, the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 14, let's, let's pick that up just real quick. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto the nations. And then shall the end come. How many think that's pretty important right there? I, I keep wondering if God's waiting on us to get preaching the kingdom. Get out to get the kingdom word out to our friends and our neighbors. Get people hooked into this different style of government that is from Jesus We've got a government king who is not a man that he would lie, like Nehemiah says. How many would like to have a government where nobody ever lied? <laughs> People getting a couple of looks back here. They're going, <laughs> amen. So this gospel of the kingdom must be preached and then we're going to come to the end of the age. Then shall the end come. That means Jesus is coming back. For a people that knows about the kingdom. And even if they didn't accept Jesus and make Jesus their king. They knew about a kingdom. And they're going to say, oh, there's the king. I think I missed it. You don't want to be that guy that misses this kingdom. Because you know what? There's not going to be any other kingdoms. When, we get to the, when you get into the book of Revelation, you realize that... Uh, all the other kingdoms of the earth are going to be swallowed up by this kingdom and there's not going to be any other kingdoms. And if you're not in this one, you're not. You're not. You're just not here anymore. You're not. You got to be in this kingdom. The smart ones get in now. How do you... This, Nicodemus went... There's only a couple of times Jesus talked about this, but it's very, very important to the kingdom. How do you get into the kingdom? This is what Nicodemus went and asked Jesus. Does anybody know how you get into the kingdom? You become born again. 
You become born again, not of the flesh, but of the spirit. Amen. Now, last week we uh, we talked a little bit about um, the uh, we talked a little bit about the different things in the kingdom. We're going to cover a couple of those things before we move on forward. Um, well, as we move on forward, um, first of all, kingdom definition, it's two words. There's king, which means sovereign ruler, and there's dom. The k- king is a sovereign ruler. He's absolute. His word is supreme. His word is law. The, the dom part means dominion, and that's his territory, where he rules, where his will is being done. So that's what a kingdom is made up of. A kingdom is a form of government where there's one sovereign ruler and his and this is, this is what the definition of a kingdom is. Now, all kingdoms have, we talked about all the things that a kingdom has. We talked about last week, let's see. We talked about um, the kingdoms have citizen, community subjects, the people that live under the rule of the king. It is not a right, but a privilege. Did you know it's a privilege to be in a kingdom? In the old days, it was a privilege. And, and I know in Hawaii, if, you, if they didn't want you in the kingdom, I mean, there were several, th- <laughs> several things that would happen. One, you could be killed automatically. That's one way to get them out. Or they could run you out and say, hey, don't, if you come in, you're going to be killed. You need to go someplace else. They ran out some people out of the kingdoms. You know, in God's kingdom, it's a privilege, but... It's not hard to get in. All you have to do is come and accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Make him your king. Amen? And become born again of the Spirit. And you become an automatic citizen of the kingdom. Translated from the kingdom of darkness. Right? Translate. Pastor talks about this. I love it when he talks about this at the end of the services. And he says, you're going from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. You're getting translated out of this evil. Oh my gosh. This is huge, guys. This is huge. So you're, you've got a privilege there. There's laws. Kingdoms are guaranteed. Uh, the laws of the kingdom guarantee access. When you, when you follow God's laws that he, that he lays down, you get access. He says, now I'm going to give you the keys now. Ooh. You got the keys to this thing. You got access. Isn't that what we really want? I mean, when you think about it, I mean, in the beginning, God says, I created man and uh, I created man and I created a male and female and I put them in the garden and I gave them dominion. What is dominion? That's not ownership. Did you know that dominion doesn't mean ownership? Ownership is really not necessarily a, a biblical concept. I hate this. I know some people are like, whoa, okay. Well, what he did was he gave us dominion, but see, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, right? So we, but he gave us full dominion over it. It's like if you ever, has anybody ever rented a house? You got a landlord, right? Then you, you pay the landlord. Now, what does he give you? He gives you full dominion of the house. You can put your furniture in there. You can watch what you want to watch in the house. You have full dominion of the house. This is what he gave Adam. Dominion. And that's also part of domain. That's, to me, I think he gave Adam a kingdom. He said, here, I'm giving you the kingdom. Right here. Okay, Adam and Eve. And they messed up and gave it. They gave the lease away. They gave it to a con artist. Somebody that lied to them and cheated them. You see what I'm saying? And Satan took this kingdom away, and he has a certain amount of dominion. But God's kingdom is, Jesus brought this kingdom back. See, for a long time, we had this this situation where Adam and Eve were on the earth, and there was this, I believe the Holy Spirit was there with them. I think the Holy Spirit was the one walking around with them. I mean, I think so. That's why I just, you know, I don't know. Maybe I could be wrong. I'm not a Bible scholar. I think the Holy Spirit's with these guys, right? And they're walking around, they're, they're fellowshipping. With, you know, we got that right now because he's not only coming down to sit, walk with us in the cooler day, he lives inside of us. <laughs> we got him inside of us. Ooh, man, this is good. So then they give away the, you know, they give away the lease basically away. And 
if you understand kingdom and government, okay, if you're going to make a colony, say you're the king, right? You're going to go over here to this place over here, and you're going to go get a, you're going to start, you're going from Spain, Spain, you're going to go over to Portugal, and you're going to, you, you, you know, you're the king in Spain, and your son wants to be king in Spain, but you said, you know what, you can't be king in Spain because I'm the king, so I'm going to send you to Portugal. You king in Portugal now. That's a colony, and they're going to speak our language, and they're going to do everything like that. So you send them over to be a colony. That's what happened. And, and why would God create us in his own image? Because he wants us to rule and reign. Uh, you know, he wants heaven on earth. See, if it starts out like that in the beginning of the book, and guess what the end of the book says? Heaven's going to come to earth. God's going to get his way, guys. God is going to get his way. This stuff is going to be, you know, right now, the God's will is not being done all over the earth. It's not being done all over the earth, but it will soon and very soon, guys. I don't think it's going to be long. And we ain't far from it, from this thing manifesting in, in the physical world. I, the more you press into this, the more you will see that this kingdom is going to manifest in this physical world pretty soon. And all this stuff, there ain't going to be no more dying. And no more leaves falling off the tree brown on your car. No more 110 degree days. No more 50 below degree days. No more death. <laughs> no more disease. No more pain. No pain in this kingdom. What do you guys think this is going to be like? Living on the earth in a kingdom like this. Ooh, glory, glory. And guess who's going to rule and reign? Guess who's going to rule and reign? Jesus is going to be the king, but he's going to be king of what? kings so you're going to be ruling around he's going to say john saint john guess what john i'm going to give you 10 cities you're going to be over those 10 cities and these cities are going to be nicer than all of the cities of the earth and guess what they're going to keep growing and growing and growing because nobody's going to die hallelujah amen how about a hand for saint john <laughs> that's all of us man this is what's going on praise god are you guys getting excited about this kingdom yet? Now you know why I walk around excited all the time. I say, man, it's getting closer. Oh boy, they're good. I can see some of this stuff has to pass. Okay, all right, it doesn't look too pretty right now. Ooh, come on, God, you can do it. Ooh, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that your word is true. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's a code of ethics in the kingdom. Acceptable lifestyle and behavior. If you decide you do not want to live a kingdom life, We've had these people, we know, I've done it. I've been at a church and then I said, well, you know, I think I'm going to go and do my own thing, you know. I was working in a tour guide in Hawaii. I thought I was, you know, I have to be Mr. Aloha, you know, right? And I got to meet, you know, meet some different people and, you know, I wasn't living a promiscuous type of lifestyle thinking that, you know, it's, it's, it's really not that bad. Did you know that 65% of these Christian people now that are on these dating sites, that are Christian dating sites, think it's okay to be promiscuous before they get married? 65%! Well, what churches are they going to? I mean, really, what, you know, do you understand what's going on out here, guys? They're calling themselves this, but they're doing that. There is an acceptable lifestyle. The reason why I'm saying that is not because, oh, you're bad, or you're going to hell, or all of that. That could be all true, but I want to tell you why. You have an inheritance of the kingdom of God that is, that is right, it's, it's right there for you. But you got to stay, you know, it's like, it's like you got to stay in the will. If daddy is a multi-billionaire, if your daddy is a multi-billionaire or your uncle's a multi-billionaire and he tells you, he tells you, hey, Messiah, guess what? I'm going to give you a billion dollars. But you got to do, you, if, you, if you break this rule right here, you disqualify yourself. You think you'd be paying attention to that? Would you pay attention to that? Of course. Yeah, yeah. He's thinking, yeah, I think I would. How many would pay attention if somebody said they're going to give you a bill? And you, maybe you think, okay, I want to stay in right standing with this so that I line myself up for the inheritance. You know what? You, you know what? It's God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Don't you think we need to focus on the kingdom if that's what he wants to give us? That's, what's, that's, that's, that's what he wants to give us, is the kingdom of God. Praise God. Whoa. All right. So we want to have an acceptable lifestyle. We want to line up. We want to tune in and turn in. We want to get on the frequency of God. How many know there's all kinds of different frequencies going on in the world right now? The prince of the air. We got all kinds of different things, right? 
All kinds of different voices coming out, right? Well, if you're, if you're wanting to listen to a, a country station on the FM channel, but you're on the AM, are you going to be able to get that? You got to tune in. God's frequency, God's frequency is always broadcasting. I found that <laughs> if you tune in, if you tune in and tap in, there is a frequency that God is always talking. He's always broadcasting on, guys. And it is good. It doesn't always sound like what you said, you know, so you can tune in and tap into that. But you can't do it if you're not living, if you're out of the will. You can't, you can't get there, okay? Well, I think that um, it's a good place to unhook right now because I pretty much covered most of the things about the kingdom. There is, well, let me say, there, can you take a little bit more, one more thing? I'll make it, can you all take a little bit more? You know who used to say that? Brother Keith Moore. And he used to, you know, he'd go long on Sundays and he said, and I'd be looking out at the, you know, down the strip there and thinking, wait a minute, the Baptist church just beat us over there to the, you know, to the, the, the Cracker Barrel buffet, you know, to the, the Sizzlers lining up too now. I don't think we can take a little bit more. We're going to be late. When those people get in there, ain't going to be nothing left. I've been there before after those guys. There's serious stuff out there in Branson, man. When they go to church, everybody dresses suit and tie. You know what I mean? The ladies got some hats on. And when they get done, they eat. <laughs> and they just might run out of food down at the restaurant. If you late. But we're going to take a little bit more, right, Brother Keith? <laughs> okay. I was at Brother Keith's church for five years. That was an experience out in Branson. I, I, I really loved it. It was great. <laughs> So can, can you all take just a little bit more? Amen. I said, I'm taking that. I like that. Okay. So um, what, what I wanted to talk about is like what Julia mentioned. She mentioned this earlier in her, in her um, uh, what, what do you call it? Testimony. She had a testimony this, this, uh, this, this uh, early this evening about angels. Angels. Are a working, bringing the money in. Angels are a working by faith. We always win by his riches up in glory. My needy will supply. God has never failed us. On him I will rely. God is prospering everything I do. Well, I tell you, I, I sing that all the time, you know. <laughs> by his faithfulness, I will always make. Though the enemy might try to hinder or delay, I'm going to make it stay. He can't make it stay. I'm going to prosper anyway. Angels are working. <laughs> I'd love to. The angels charge the angels we have a spiritual military guys spiritual military yeah. i just heard today just before i came that three thousand national guard servicemen were deployed to the uh to the border did you hear that to the board to the southern border to start put order back over there and they're going to put some of the trump policies back in order over there because there's problems going on over there and they need to get some kind of order over there Okay, so that's in the natural. But guess what? When you got spiritual issues going on, man, call on your angels. Uh, you got more than one piece. Of, oh, you got a guardian angel. What did, what did the Lord tell you about that, Julia, the other day when you said about David's guardian angel? What did the Lord tell you? What did he tell He said what? There's, there had to be. Some of the craziest stuff I did and you did when we were young, I wouldn't have been here. I had some uh, crazy, I mean, totally drunk, driving my sports cars fast. I go and I'm, a, I'm going down the freeway like this, spinning around, you know, I get back on there and get home and I get home. I'm throwing up and I'm, I'm like, you know, I could have died out there easily. I look back on some of the stuff I was doing. I'm thinking you were crazy. God was, wa God had a purpose. You know, the reason one of the testimonies I talked about Joyce Meyer last week, I got what it was. She said, you know what my testimony is? I'm still here. I'm still standing. You guys are still here. Dave, you're still here. Enemy tried to get you and take you out. You're still here, brother. You are still here. Pastor, he's still here. <laughs> I'm still here. You know, brother Tim, brother Tim back there, he's still here. <laughs> Tim Rockaway, man, he's still here. You know, we, that is, the, okay, we got angels, okay? Now, Jesus talks about his angels. We're just going to touch on this one, and then we're going to call it a night, okay, guys? And uh, Jesus, Jesus touched, uh, touched on this. Let's see. I've got to find it over here. Got to, my paper's a little mixed up. Angels are working. Yeah. 
Can you bring up Matthew 13, 40 at 242? You know, you wonder how God is going to do this thing and get all of the evil forces, all of the evil principalities and the darkness out of the earth. And, you know, I used to think, man, I wonder if, you know, we're, we're supposed to be the, the army of God, right? Do we have to go in there and get all these bad guys out? Look at this. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. Go ahead. Next. The Son of Man will send out His angels and they will weed out of His kingdom <laughs> everything that causes sin and all who do evil. Oh, glory. How many know that if Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus called on His angels, right? Did you know that when we uh, ask Jesus into our lives that God sees us just like Jesus and we have that same access to this military? We got the same access to this military. We got to put angels around the camp. Every time you had the kids over, you guys do that. I'm calling on name. We charge a name. You know why the angels are bored sometimes? Because we don't tell them to do nothing. We don't know how to access our angels. That's another power key right there. Here's a key to unlock the kingdom right here. Get your, get your angels keys ready to go. Get your forgiveness key ready to go. And start unlocking the right things. And locking right. Some stuff you got to lock and some stuff you got to unlock. That's why you got keys. Right? Amen. Okay. Um, let's see. I think we got one more after this, right? They will throw them into the blazing furnace. They will throw them into the blazing furnace where they will be weeping and gashing of teeth. Guess what? All the evil stuff is going to go into the blazing furnace, guys. And Jesus is going to have his angels. He, the son of man is going to have his angels do that for us. We don't have to do a cleanup. We're not the military. We are citizens and we are protected by this military. Amen. In, this, in, this unseen, in this unseen kingdom. Because my kingdom is not of this world, Jesus said. My kingdom is not of this world. It's not of this place. My kingdom is an unseen kingdom. I love when he talked to Pilate. Because Pilate understood kingdom. Pilate said, after he talked to Jesus, he went, you know what? I think I better leave this boy alone. This guy really is a king. <laughs> You know, he, he, he understood. See, he didn't talk to the Sadducees and Pharisees because they weren't understanding kingdom. He didn't have no, why waste my time talking to these guys, you know? I look at that and I think, wow, that's an interesting way to look at it. But he didn't want to waste his time. He said, well, he was quiet to these guys. But then Pilate, he's, he started opening up and talking to Pilate. And Pilate got it. You see? We have at our access angels by, you know, people have come to the church and I used to think, well, you know, these people are a little more spiritual than I am. But you know what? <laughs> We've seen that. They did see the angels. They have seen the angels. There are angels that guard this church. That's why this church is still here. Praise God. And there's angels that guard your life. And you have a military that you can access. You have access to that. Stay in right standing with the king, you got access to the military. Stay in right standing with the king, you have access to all things that, um, that you need. Your time becomes more valuable to the king. He makes, your, he makes more time for you to, to use to advance his kingdom. Oh, man, it just goes on and on and on. Praise God. Okay, so I'd like to uh, leave it right there as far as um, I think we finally got through the different aspects of the kingdom. And I like that military part. I really do. And I just want to say that next week we're going to talk a little bit about um, the everlasting kingdom, the kingdom of God. And we're going, to, we're going to go into a little bit more into the New Testament, a little bit more of what, what God is taking us to. Did you know that God is taking us somewhere through this journey, through this Bible here? He's taking us somewhere. And there is a kingdom that is ready to manifest. And we're closer to it than anybody's ever been on the earth in the history of mankind. We're, 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 we're closer to it than anybody else. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you so much for letting me come and share tonight. Amen. Thank you.